um, if I sleep out and I don't judge my thoughts, then I will be judged in my circumstances. Again, the scripture we talked about in 1 Corinthians 11, verse 31, verse 32, sheds some light on circumstantial judgments in here. It says, if I judge myself, I will not be judged. So on the flip side, what happens if I do not judge myself? If I don't judge myself, I'm going to start seeing judgments in my circumstances. And judgments in my circumstances can be from people in my world, or it can even be from things breaking in my situation, circumstances. I'm going down the road, I'm getting, I'm getting a flat tire. I'm going down the road, I can't keep my word to anybody. I told them I'll be at their house by 4 o'clock, but immediately I said, I'll be at your house by 4 o'clock, 4 o'clock, that's when my tire gets flat on the road. There's something wrong. I am being judged circumstantially right now to pull my attention to let me know that I haven't judged myself properly at the thought level. It can be judgment from other people in our world. People just start talking ugly about us. They start backbiting. They start acting cranky towards us. They may not know what they're doing. Well, realize that judgment is a manifestation of approvals or disapprovals from God's creation. And the people in your world are part of God's creation, and they don't understand the reason they're getting edgy at you. Creation is reacting against you. It's a disapproval of creation. It is a mechanism that God's placed in motion in a system to govern God's creation based on your response to obedience, your response of obedience, or your response of disobedience. I don't understand the reason people just want to favor me. They're just giving me blessings and showering blessings on me. And I go down to the mall, everybody's just blessing me. I go down the mall, everybody wants to give me a gift card. They may not know what they're doing, but it is a manifestation of approval. Why? Because I've chosen to judge myself, and that's translating to positive judgments. They're temporary, but they're judgments. So these are the major manifestations of temporary judgments. The first one is personal judgment at the thought level. You judge your thoughts. Approving of the thought if the thoughts are positive. Disapproving of the thoughts if the thoughts are not positive. But if I refuse to judge myself, then I'm going to start seeing judgments on the outside, which will include breakages in my circumstances or harshness from the people in my world. Oh, what about people that persecute you? Are, are they necessarily, uh, is that a manifestation of judgment? Are they on the side? Well, we'll have to refer you back to baptism with fire to understand how that works. The kind of reaction from God's creation that we're talking about in here, uh, literally, will be things like afflictions and temptations. Persecutions are not going to over, overcome you because they come because of the word. And God still allows them to come to refine your faith, but afflictions are directly related to sin and frailties. So when you start seeing that in your circumstances, you start seeing those in your circumstances, you recognize there's temporary disapproval in here. But that's good news. The Bible says when God allows that to happen my way, ha happen in my circumstances, it's because God wants me to secure the best of eternal judgments in the long run. Examples of temporary judgments that we can see all through the pages of the Bible include God's dealing with Pharaoh in Egypt, the nation of Israel themselves, the church in Corinth, and the churches in the book of Revelation. In the life of Pharaoh, back in Egypt, when he was holding God's people in captivity and in bondage, we can see a manifestation of temporary judgments. And because Pharaoh was not smart enough to recognize the temporary disapprovals that God was treating him to, temporary judgments started escalating in intensity until Pharaoh lost the opportunity to secure the best eternal judgment. When God first sent Moses to, to Pharaoh, God told Moses, Israel is my firstborn. I need him. I need you to let him go so he can worship me. You don't let him go, 
I'll kill your firstborn. It's God's warning to him. But that's a manifestation of disapproval. And it is simple. It is a simple warning. It has, he has no loss of infrastructure to his nation. He has no loss to their economy. He has no loss to them financially. Just simple temporary judgment or warning. Let Israel go. It's my firstborn. You don't let him go. I'm going to kill your firstborn. But Pharaoh wouldn't listen to that. He says, who is this your God that I should give him some kind of credence? He said, I don't know your God and I will not let your people go. In stubbornness and arrogance, he escalated the affliction of God's people and made them build bricks without straw. And said, Moses, you go back to Pharaoh and then place your rod down and uh, your rod is going to become a snake. And Pharaoh is going to try to do the same thing as well. He has a bunch of magicians with him. They're going to put their rods down. Their rods are going to become snakes. But your snake is going to swallow up their snakes. And that's exactly what happened. When Pharaoh saw that, Pharaoh should know automatically that there is something a little bit superior about this God of Moses. And he's superior. It's a little bit more powerful than our God. He suffered embarrassment in the face of his magicians. That's a manifestation of disapproval. It's still temporary. But it's a little bit on a higher platform than just listening to a warning. If he just heed it and say, okay, Moses, all right, I understand. I just want to be fair to you guys. You guys build the infrastructure for us in Egypt. You can take your people. You can go. But Pharaoh wouldn't listen to that. And temporary judgments kept on occurring in Egypt one step at a time in greater intensity until Pharaoh lost his opportunity to secure the best eternal judgment. They lost their firstborn children, their economy was devastated, and ultimately he lost his life in a hot chase of Moses in the Red Sea. We can see an example of temporary judgments over there. We don't want to be like Pharaoh. We want to be smart. What about the nation of Israel? The nation of Israel themselves, we can see in Deuteronomy chapter 28, when God told them, and all these curses will come on you if you disobey me. Those curses increase in intensity as you go down that verse, that chapter. From verse 15 downwards until verse 68, they start increasing in intensity. And from verse 1 to verse 14, they start increasing in intensity of blessings. We want to challenge people to do that study and read it. What about the church in Corinth? The church in Corinth, I believe, was the most carnal of, of all the churches that Paul founded. And in 1 Corinthians thir uh, 11 verse 30, the Bible records the reason some of them are sick and the reason some of, some of them die. They come into the temple, into the sanctuary, into the church. They want to have a holy communion. And what they do is they get drunk on wine. They don't take their turns to serve each other. They're not orderly. And Paul says in 1 Corinthians 11.30, he says some of, some of you are weak, sick, and some people die because of that. That's an escalation of temporary judgments because people will not heed the warning of caution. Let's look at 1 Corinthians 11, verse 30. It says, that is why many among you are weak and sick and a number have fallen asleep. Why? In verse 29, it says, for anyone who eats and drinks without recognizing the body of the Lord, eats and drinks judgment on himself. So it means what is going into is judgment. It says, that is why some of you are weak and sick and some of you have fallen asleep. So that lets us know the intensity of judgments, weakness, sickness, and physical death. What about the churches in the book of Revelation? The book of Revelation is Revelation chapter 2. Jesus talking specifically to the pastors of certain churches in Asia Minor. And he told them, you guys, I needed to change your ways. 
you don't change your ways i am going to deal with you in the long run but if you change your ways everything's going to be okay with you that, that lets us know manifest manifestation of temporary judgments in that situation as well and if they were to amend their ways then they had an opportunity to secure the best eternal judgment so those are the types of temporary judgments that we can see and all through the pages of the Bible there's just a plethora of them. There's a lot of them. If you get a chance you want to do that study, we want to invite you to do that. What about the examples of eternal judgments? We talked about temporary judgments right now. There are two major categories of judgments based on the consequences they bring. Temporary judgments and eternal judgments. What about eternal judgment? Do we have any examples of that in the Bible? Of course. First example of eternal judgment is the banishment of Lucifer from the third heaven, the person we now call Satan and the devil. Because he started the concept of rebellion and treason against God based on the evidence of Isaiah chapter 14 and Ezekiel chapter 28. The Bible says iniquity was found in him. It was created to be perfect from the day it was made. It was the perfection of beauty, the anointed cherub, but iniquity was found in him. And the Bible says God swung him out of his presence because of that. And there is no getting back to heaven because nobody paid the price for his sin, for the devil. And that judgment has eternal consequences for the devil. Another manifestation of eternal judgment is the re reward of a glorified resurrected body stated, stated in the book of Daniel. We looked at that last week when we were talking about resurrection of the dead. Daniel chapter 12 verse 3 says, Those who turn many to righteousness will shine like the firmament of the heavens and the righteous will inherit the resurrection of eternal life. That eternal life is forever. That's a manifestation of eternal judgment, and it is positive. You know, the reward of eternal judgment, especially in our generation, is the next catching away, which we call the rapture, based on the evidence of Ephesians in Ephesians chapter 5. The Bible says Jesus is coming for a church without spot, wrinkle, blemish, or any such thing. So if I cleanse myself from spots and wrinkles and blemishes, then Jesus is going to come for me. The Bible says that those who through consistency seek for glory, honor, and immortality, he is going to give life to make their bodies immortal. And we know inheriting the life on your physical body to get your immortality back in this physical body is the prerequisite to overcome gravity so that you can fly with Jesus 40 days after that has happened to you. We talked about that extensively last week because Jesus says, I am the way to get out of this planet to the Father. Follow my strategy and you will get exactly what I got. That's the reason we know that we're going to get it just like Jesus got it. Now, how did Jesus get out of this planet? Jesus got on this planet 40 days after he picked up his glorified physical body. If that's the way he got it, that's the way we're going to get it as well. But once we get it, that's a manifestation of eternal judgment. It's a manifestation of approval that has eternal everlasting consequences another example of eternal judgment on the flip side of things especially is the punishment of an eternally corrupt resurrected body which is described graphically in Isaiah chapter 6 6 to 6 this is the people who rebel against God their bodies are going to be in the lake of fire tormented by the worms that never die for the rest of eternity and it has its antecedent in the missing of the next flights which is imminent because Jesus is not coming for a church that is spotty and wrinkled blemishes uh, they're not going to see Jesus they're not going to get the glories in their physical bodies that can give them the ability to pick up their glory codes so they can overcome gravity space and time and check out with Jesus those are manifestations of judgments, approvals or disapprovals with everlasting or eternal consequences. We looked at examples of eternal judgments and examples of temporary judgments. Okay, let's take another break. 
go through your notes for a moment and answer the following questions. Question one, which of the answers below is an example of a manifestation of negative circumstances? A, judgments from people in my world, such as backbiting, speaking ugly or hateful towards me. B, termination from a job without cause. Sudden health crisis, or D, all of the above. The correct answer is D, all of the above are examples of manifestations of negative circumstances. Question two. When can one expect to see physical manifestations of negative judgments in his or her life? A. Upon refusing to judge oneself. B. Refusing to approve of positive thoughts and disapprove of negative thoughts. C. Admitting to the truth and judging oneself. Or D, answers A and B. The correct answer is D, answers A and B are both correct. Question three, is there an example of anyone in scripture who received manifestations of negative circumstances because he refused to judge himself? A. Egyptian Pharaoh B. Joseph in Egypt C. Jesus during his earthly ministry or D. Daniel in Babylon is A, Egyptian Pharaoh. Question four, what are the two major categories for judgments based on the consequences they bring? A, temporary and semi-temporary judgment. B, temporary and eternal judgment. C, there are only eternal judgments. Or D, there are no judgments for anyone at any time. The correct answer is B. Now, let's proceed to listen to the rest of the message.